This is physics. In this demonstration, I'm going to do a demonstration about vectors and resultant vectors. To help me with this demonstration is going to be Elizabeth, Maria, who happens to be behind the camera, and Marcia. Over here, and your name is? Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth. Elizabeth has a rope, and you are? Marcia. And Marcia also has a rope. Now they're going to tie these ropes to this chair, the arms of this chair. Do a demonstration of vectors. Go ahead. Okay, they're good and tight. Okay, hold the rope. Pull up. The, bring the rope with you up to one angle. Hold on a sec. I want to see how good your knots are. <laughs> there we go. That's good. Uh oh. That's a problem. No, don't leave it. Let's, let's go with it and see what happens. Hopefully, it's strong enough. So, you're, I've got two ropes here. They're going to represent vectors. One is up at that angle, and another one is up at that angle. And they're going to pull together at the same time. And I'm just going to stay here. What can go wrong? <laughs> I'll just stay here. Okay, let's see. Oh. Now, forces are pushes and pulls. Right now, they are applying a force on the rope. That's good. I'm going to go back. Forces are defined as a push or a pull. Right now, they are pulling. Therefore, they are make, putting a force on the rope at an angle. Those angles right there. And oh, away we go. If they do this evenly, and the wheels behave, <laughs> keep going. Oh, what can go wrong? No, oh, no, it's a It's fantastic. Can you just put the ropes there, please, for a moment? So let's describe what actually happened here. I'm going to draw an XY plane. I'm going to use my various markers, make sure that's a dry erase. XY plane. Standard Cartesian plane will make that the x-axis up here, the y-axis. I'm going to draw the chair and the two forces being applied on the chair. Let's see, we'll use blue here for the chair. So there's the chair, and we got some handles on either side. And we have a couple of ropes, one yellow, one white. I'm going to depict those as well, one black. Connected to the side here, pulling in that direction. And the other one. Pulling in this direction. Now, as I said earlier, forces are pushes and pulls. So they are pulling on these ropes. Therefore, there is a force on these ropes. Now, I don't have the instrumentation here in order to measure the actual force. So I'm just going to detect the force here. And I'll use this one as F1. Some applied force. Applied means somebody is doing the actual pulling or the pushing. So it's an applied force. This means somebody is actually doing the, the pushing or the pulling applied force. We call that F1. And there's also an applied force on the other rope. We'll call this one F2, representing forces. I don't have, I said, the instrumentation in order to put a number on here. So I'll let these two, number, two, two letters here depict the forces. <clears throat> There's also an angle between them. Again, we, we could have measured the angles between the two ropes. And in our case, we'll just call them, with respect to the x-axis, angle theta 1 and angle theta 2. Now these can be turned into vectors now because we have a magnitude. Even though it didn't have an actual measurement, it do have a magnitude. And we have an angle. And the definition of a vector is a magnitude with a, with a direction. So this can be a force, here we go, or a, a vector. And we'll call that vector A. And the same thing applies to this one down here. here. This is a vector. And we'll call that vector B. Vector B. The property of vectors is we can pick them up and move them anywhere 
on this two plane board anywhere at all, as long as we don't change the magnitude and we don't change the direction. So I can pick this vector up and move it to the origin right here with the x and y axis cross. Pick that vector up and move it down here. So I'm going to shorten it by about this much. Well, not really shorten it, but redraw it such that here's the vector. I picked it up and moved it. Picked it up and moved it such that it's joining here at the origin. And I could do the same with this vector, pick it up and move it, such that it's joining here at the origin. And I have to keep the same length, same magnitude, so it's gonna be a little less, there we go. So there's vector B, and here is vector A. The result, the result of the pulls, these two pulls, the result of those two pulls was me <laughs> on the chair moving forward in, well, I sort of went in sort of a zigzag, but going in this direction, this would be the result, and it has a name resultant because it also has a direction and a magnitude. Mathematically, we haven't done the magnitude. This is the resultant vector coming from the word, the result of those two poles. Mathematically, and even though we don't have the numbers, but mathematically, this can be shown. Where these two vectors, vector A plus vector B, is equal to the resultant vector. And now I'm going to introduce you to Maria. She's behind the camera. I'm just going to take the camera from her. And here we go. Here's Maria and the others. <laughs> 